I'm going to talk a little bit about building trust. I think you remember when, when I started off, we said um, it's about, we're, we're seeking to empower girls to lead. That's what G4G would like to do. So you would then ask, but why is the first session not about leadership, right? You would say, why are we talking about uh, building trusting relationships? But I'd like to ask you to do something for me. I want you to think, and this is predominantly for the mentees, I want you to think a little bit about um, any biases you've heard um, about women or about girls. Um, what are the things you typically have been told about women? Um, what are those myths? Um, and I'm watching the chat box to see um, what, what, what you have heard people say about women. And then I will explain why building trust is our first session. Hi, Andy Wetu. Mm -hmm. Women are emotional leaders. We hear that one all the time. What else do you hear them say about women? What is typical? Yeah, we belong in the kitchen. That one we, we've heard about all the time, but we can belong in the kitchen and at the boardroom table, right? Yeah, okay. Women, okay. Oh, woo, woo, woo. women are always arguing. I want to say, uh, yes, yes. They're not strong enough. We are our worst enemies. Women can't lead. So that's where I'm going to start off with, that there are many myths that they say about women. Um, and conversely, they always say men are better, men are stronger. They know better. They know what to do, right? But one of the biggest myths that we want to break at Girls for Girls is the myth that we don't play well together. And that women, when we are working together, and you can see it coming out um, in the chat box, that when we are put together, we fight and we destroy each other. So that's where we want to start, by saying, sisters, we are actually stronger together. In fact, I want to say to you that the reason they say that is because they realize how powerful we are when women come together. And that's why we start off with building trust. It's building trust amongst women. Um, the first thing we say to you at Girls for Girls, even think about my sister's keeper. The first thing that we talked about when we joined the meeting today is to recognize that you are stronger when you have your sister behind you, watching your back, your sister to be able to fall back on. So building 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 trust and building trusting relationships amongst other women is our starting point at girls for girls um it's the first thing we want to demystify if everyone has always said we can't work well together we are disproving it this group is made purely of women and we are successfully running the show um, on our own and that's why we start off um, with building trust and like shade whispered to you guys and talked about village this is what uh, building trust is about. What, 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 when, if I'm to ask you about some of the most powerful women that you know, in, in the chat box again, who are some of the most powerful women that you know? And can you identify whether they had other women supporting them and standing next to them? Okay, so Shade says, it's my mom, yeah? Shade, what makes your mom strong? Have you ever seen the network around her? Yeah, I think what makes her strong is um, being able to depend on others and also, uh, I think just also leading with love. I think that that makes a person very strong. And that is what tends to be unique about women, that we have a different way that we lead, right? We, we lead with love, we lead with empathy. Um, so under building trust, one of the things that we, we, we talk about is the fact that if you create that circle of women around you, you become an inevitable and an indomitable force. Um, if I think about my own journey, um, it, it really has been filled with women. Yes, there have been men in my journey, but the women have come in at pivotal moments. And I, if I look around this room today, um, it, it's my sisters that I typically call upon. Um, I look at Steffi, who introduced herself. She's one of the younger women. When I was thinking, hmm, will G4G work in South Africa? Um, her and Kinele were one of the younger women I went to and I said, do you think it would work? And look at where we are today. 
But also when I was asking myself, okay, the younger women have validated it. Will I be able to motivate, you know, other mentors to come and join uh, the bandwagon with us? I went to Elaine, who I, once in a while you'll hear me call her Fodo, it's our fond name for her. Um, Elaine said, yes, it's going to work. So once again, she's the one who motivated me and said to me, no, let's go for this thing. It's going to work. And like you heard, she's one of our directors. Um, Sheila, who said, I asked her, but she, Sheila is a friend of a friend, um, a dear friend of mine from Uganda. Um, look at Fadzai. Fadzai joined us as a mentee and has ended up joining the journey now, not just as a mentor, but she's actually coordinating a, group, um, a G4G group um, for, for high schoolers. Then comes the second wave. So people like Shade, who were a mentor last year, brought in by Steffi. Um, and then, you know, she stayed on to become a mentor. What am I saying? I'm saying that if you have an idea, I had an idea. I saw G4G in Uganda and I thought to myself, okay, interesting concept. Let's think about whether it will work in South Africa. I bring it to South Africa. It's still an idea in Rita's mind. How do I act on it? And how do I take it national? Today we have, I think, students that are mentees from across South Africa, from KZN all the way to the Western Cape. I was only able to do it because I called on my sisters. My sisters are the ones who made me feel brave and strong enough to be able to do something. That's the power of village. And we, we proudly call it village. And I think it resonates in Africa because we know. They say it takes a village to raise a child. We, of all people, understand what um, community does. Um, and that is just an example from G4G. But if I'm to tell you, and the ones who will be in my circle will probably hear more about it. If I'm to tell you about my life journey professionally, it's a woman that empowered me to leave formal employment. I used to work with Deloitte and PricewaterhouseCoopers, those nice, big, glam international companies. I left and I set up my own company in 2012. And today we work in over 15 companies, in, in over 15 countries. The ability to do that was because someone said to me, you know what, Rita? PwC gets more out of you than you're getting out of them. It was a woman that freed me. When I joined the consulting world and I was thinking, oh, I'm not as good as the PwC guys to be able to charge out at their international uh, US dollar rates. It's a woman that said, no, you put in your tender and I'm going to make sure that you come in at all the rates, whether it's a man, whether it's a woman. And she's the one who actually said, why is Rita, who is highly skilled, um, not being given the, the, the same rate as a person who you know, is at her level and she's actually more accredited than it. So in my personal life journey, I also have found that, and I, you're gonna hear a lot of testimony um, about women who stand behind you. I have sisters, um, when I'm depressed, I know I can go to them. When I have a great business idea, I know I can go to them, okay? So what we're saying is that there's, there's a lesson to learn here and that's why in G4G, we talk about villages. And that's why when we are really ex uh, sharing experiences, we break into the circles. Those circles are symbolic of the village that is now being um, created uh, created around you. Um, so it's something that is dear, and I think it's something that we're talking about here at Building Trust, because who do you build trust with? It's with people you trust, right? Okay, but let me move on. How do you build trust? Any ideas, any thoughts? How do you build trusting relationships? What are the things you would do in order to have trusting relationships? Consistency, yes, being consistent, yeah? Mm -hmm. What else? Transparency, people must see you for who they are. You listen, you respect. Anything else? Being honest. Understanding each other. Honesty comes up again. Supporting each other. Mm -hmm. All those words that we have put in the chat box, are the things we, if you listened to Fadzai earlier on today, she kind of touched on it. Those principles that we have over there, and we're going to try, I, we, I'm actually thinking we should make a word cloud out of them. That is how you build trust in relationships. So now G4G has given you an opportunity. You're entering this village. You've heard the mentors you're going to be engaging with. You kind of know the mentees because they're in your school. You're entering a village. It's not just about entering a village. It's about being able to maintain trusting relationships with, with the women in your village. And those principles that we have just talked about, the loyalty, the care, um, keeping your word um, is what is important. What if we had said to you, oh, when you come for the G4G meetings, we will buy you data. What if today morning we all started saying, um, we actually think today you sponsor your own data and then next time we will sponsor it immediately 
what would you have started thinking about G4G? That, look, I really don't trust these guys, yeah? So we have to live the principles. It's not enough to just say these things and write them down. The principles that we have listed in the chat box are what we are going to practice as we build our village at, um, at, at Girls for Girls. One of the other things I want to point out is that when you're building a village around you, and now this is maybe even bigger than Girls for Girls, is that I would encourage you to be conscious about who it is you're letting into your village. Sometimes it might look like it's nice to let a person into your village, but I always ask, you know, why are you letting someone um, into your village? Do they make you feel positive? Do they make you feel good about yourself? Do they, when, when you engage with them, do you feel uplifted? Those are the tests I would encourage you, the young ladies in the room, to look out for. Sometimes you might think, oh, I want that person. I, I really want that person to be my friend. And then when you get to know them, you realize that every time you're with them, they're putting you down. They're making you feel negative. Then you don't want them in your village. So one of the things you're going to learn about managing your village is also about being bold and being able to say, you, I've had an experience with you. I don't want you in my village because when I engage with you, you don't make me feel good. You don't make me feel positive. Instead, you, leaving, you leave me feeling, uh, feeling down. So the, 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 what I'm trying to say is that be conscious. Uh, don't just be receiving people and saying, yeah, that's my friend and that's, no. Ask yourself, do they actually help me in my life journey? And the other thing I would also say is that in your village, think about the different things, the different members of your village do for you. So for instance, as a student, who is your study buddy? Who is it that really helps you keep on top of things? Um, but I guess as a student in like, and, and like all of us, even mentors in real life, who is it that champions you and, and makes you laugh and makes you smile, that inspires you and uplifts you? Who is it that challenges you? You know, they, you have some friends who will always say, oh, that's so great, Rita. You're such a great person, Rita. I have friends in my life who are like, hmm, Sounds like a good idea. Have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Those people, um, if they, as long as they do it in a positive way, those people are very important to help you grow. Because if you know you, you, you trust them and you believe in them, they're the ones who will make you be your best self. Um, so everyone in your village always keep asking, you know, who are these? So for instance, in my village, I have ladies in my village or, or people in my village um, who I go to for professional help. There are people I go to when I want to talk about G4G. There are people I go to when I want to talk about the issues I might be having with my daughter or with my husband or with my family. Um, so understand in your village who these different people are. And when we talk about mission under courageous leadership in the next session, when we talk about your mission, you're, we're going to be asking you who in your village is helping you work um, towards the attainment um, uh, of, of, um, of your mission. So as I wrap up, a couple of things I would like to say, the power of the collective, which is really about the village. Not only should you be looking for what the village can do for you, please also ask what you can do for the village. You become more powerful when you're able to put something into the village, when you're able to contribute a little something. And I'm not talking about money. Sometimes it's about effort, sometimes it's about ideas. So when we come together as a village, I'm hoping that you find this as a safe space so that even if it's just, how can we do things better? Someone might actually say, oh guys, why do you start the meeting this way? Why don't we start it that way? We welcome those ideas. Because when you do that, you're helping the village get better, okay? The other thing I would say is be bold and be brave. We're doing our best to create a safe space for you. We're going to keep confidentiality. All of you signed a, a confidentiality form getting in. The mentors have signed a confidentiality form um, when they joined Athlon Girls. No one is going to talk about anything private that you reveal in this meeting, whether it's in the circle or whether it's in the bigger group. We are going to remain confidential. It's one of the things we are going to do to maintain trust and to build trust with, with each other, which means you have the freedom to be bold and to be brave, to suggest ideas or to say today, this is what I'm going to do. And this is how you can help me. We had a mentee in uh, the 2019 UJ cohort. Um, she was called, she's called Confidence and we'll share her story with you. She saw a number of her fellow students that were just about to drop out 
um, of university because Naswas, I believe, was paying for their, their student bill uh, to go to class, but they didn't have food. Um, they didn't have um, um, toiletries. So what she did is she said, ah, you G for G women. Um, you talk about, you know, if, 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 if you're our village and if we have concerns, we bring it to you. She brought her concerns to us. And I think it was within a week. They had already mobilized enough. The, the mentors on this group had already mobilized enough to help um, the students that confidence had mobilized um, to stay and complete um, their studies. So I share that story because confidence in the middle of a G4G um, session challenged us, but she was bold enough. What if she had sat with her idea and thought, oh, okay, it's a really good idea. So what I'm saying to you is speak up. Yeah, we're here to help you. We're here to support you. Last lesson or rather last message for the day. Keep your eyes open and forward. There's a lot that's going to be shared with you. If you think all the way back to what Sheila shared with us today, it's, it's something that's going to help you cope in these tough times. We're all still in a relative lockdown. Some of you are going into some of the most major exams you will ever take in your life. There's a lot happening around you. She's already given you tips in terms of how to manage yourself. You heard from some of the mentees and mentors who are sharing tips. And then you're going to be learning a lot of knowledge um, in sessions two all the way to six. But if you're not listening, if you're not present, if you're not here, those messages and lessons will pass by you. You'll be looking down, you'll be looking at your phone and it's gonna go past you. So stay forward, stay, center, stay, stay centered um, and keep your learning um, open. I will close off by um, saying one of the favorite quotes that I have um, from the Seven Habits for Highly Effective People, which is one of my favorite books to give. You'll, you'll, you'll see me giving it out every once in a while. Um, is this, that I am not a product of my circumstances. Okay, my environment does not define me. I am a product of my decisions. You decide. You decide what you're going to get out of G4G. You decide what you're going to get out of each of the mentors and the mentees within the room. Okay, and you will best get it if you work on building trusting relationships. Okay, so thank you very much. That's an insight into building trust. We are going to go into the groups and we're going to discuss um, a little bit more. So that's it from me. I'm going to hand it back to Sheila, who is now going to talk about um, the, the, what's going to happen in the circles. 